What is up guys and welcome back to another Ray Trader Legends video with me, The Real Deal. So today we are going to be doing a live reaction to the Iron Twins. Um, I've not seen it yet, so I'm interested to see what they're going to do. But just before we do watch it, I just want to say two things. First of all, I think I'm a bit frustrated like the rest of the community. Um, everyone really wants live PvP. You know, every game pretty much has it and we're way way behind on that and i was quite disappointed when they said oh you know it's so difficult to code and stuff i i get that it's not straightforward and that it does take a lot of work but at the end of the day lots of other games are doing it and they've been doing it for a long time and ray Joe legends really need to try and catch up on that second thing is i'm quite skeptical um like i've not watched this yet but i've always found that um, whenever you bring in something that makes the to, what, what from what I've seen, like those short clips they showed, it just looks very complicated. I always find that when you make things more complicated, it takes the fun enjoyment out of the game and it just starts to get a bit silly. Um, you know, the best games I've ever played are Kiss, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Every single game where you know, simple gameplay that's fun and enjoyable, that is the best. And I'm just a bit worried that they're going to make things a bit too too complicated and it's just going to sort of suck the fun out but let's not be too judgy let's uh let's watch it and see what they say i'm gonna have to put my headphones in for this one otherwise i'm not gonna know what they're saying hello everyone hey Welcome to another episode of our update preview series dedicated to awakening you know one thing i do want to say is these uh sort of um previews they give us are absolutely top notch and i do love this guy his, his voice is so deep it's just like he was a man, and she was a woman, and together they played Raid Shadow Legends. Our last episode discussed the new mechanics of summoning souls and getting blessings Which for is, your champions. Which is, to be honest, pretty confusing today, as well. we're delving deep into the Iron Twins Fortress, a new dungeon where you'll earn the soul coins and soul essence needed for awakening. Okay, so it's 15 sages, just like Minotaur. This imposing fortress works a little differently to other dungeons. It's divided into the four affinities, with its affinity changing each day. Like with the affinity keeps, there will be a set schedule for each day's affinity, meaning you can plan your siege ahead of time. So I've got a feeling that, um, you, you know, you're going to have to bring in, if you can, if it's a force day, you're going to need to use force champions, all force champions, if possible. And then, you know, magic champions for the magic affinity and all that jazz. So yeah, I've got a feeling it's going to be like that. Each affinity will have 15 stages at launch, and your progression is unique to each affinity. This means you can't focus all your efforts getting to stage 15 on the magic affinity, for example, to unlock the stages for all other affinities. Keeping track of the current affinity is vital for success in this dungeon, as you'll see when we break down the Iron Twin skills. As for entering the dungeon, you'll need energy and a new resource. For why why can it just be energy free um you know either they're going to need to start giving us energy more energy in different ways and if we're getting six keys a day that means you're gonna have to do this every single day um well yeah more than likely you are going to need to do this every day it's like another thing just like doom tower where you're going to need to use those keys because obviously everyone's going to want to empower their champions and make them so much stronger um so yeah it's a bit it's a bit hit or miss if you ask me fortress keys like with faction crypts in the doom tower you only get a set number of fortress keys each day six to be exact so make sure you use them if you fail a stage you won't lose a fortress key but you will lose the energy so keep an eye on your reserves we know how to enter the fortress now let's talk about its masters the iron twins as soon as you enter the dungeon you launch straight into a battle with the iron twins there are no waves of minions to fight here oh man these guys look cool I love like their sort of twitchy animation. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever seen Hellboy, but it does remind me of like the sort of creatures and characters in that. Uh, great film, by the way, the original two anyway. And one's called like Golden Army, and that this sort of reminds me of the Golden Army. But also, there's also this like um, like assassin in it, and he's like sort of like clockwork. So basically, sort of goes around killing people, and then when he sort of gets hurt really badly, he has to sort of wind himself up, and then he can start going again and start popping off and uh taking people out so yeah they look cool this they is a cool. good thing given that the iron twins are as tough as literal nails you know being a huge metal monstrosity but before we dive into the iron twins individual skills we need to talk about iron brand their unique unblockable and unremovable debuff 
On its own, Iron Brand does nothing. But you should keep a sharp eye on the debuff's duration on each of your champions. The Iron Twins have a super powerful skill that does major damage depending on the current duration of any Iron Brand debuffs. So failing to manage this debuff is a recipe for disaster. With that out of the way, let's dig into exactly what the Iron Twins have in their arsenal. The first skill is Voltaic Pendulums. This sees the Iron Twins firing two bladed pendulums at one champion, decreasing their crit rate and then placing a weakened debuff if they already have crit rate debuffs. The Twins then electrocute the rest of the party, first decreasing their attack before then decreasing the defense of each champion who has a decrease. Okay, so this is basically going to reduce damage for your, well, on your damage dealers. So if you've got a defense nuka or just like a defense champion that hits hard, that's going to reduce their damage. And any attack based champion is going to reduce their damage as well. Increase attack debuff on them. Talk about shocking. So, first tip. Bring a champion who can cleanse debuffs or block them entirely. While it won't negate Iron Brand, it will take any other debuffs the Iron Twins can throw at you off the table. Trust us, you'll need to be at your full strength if you want to come out on top. Next up, Fires of Insanity. The Iron Twins scorch your entire party and place Iron Brand debuffs on each champion, with the duration of each Iron Brand dependent on each champion's defense stat. The champion with the highest defense... Okay, so if you want to remember this one remember that basically there's gonna be like a fire animation so when you see that fire animation pop off uh, you know that it's all about defense so they're gonna basically um be stealing your defense and putting out those um stacks of this gets iron 10 brand. turns of iron brand the next highest gets nine the next gets eight and so on if a champion already has an iron brand debuff on them its duration is simply increased by that same number of turns that's not all oh no every time the iron twins use 45 stacks that uh, that does not look very good Use this skill the defense stat increases by a set amount for the rest of the battle with extra increases for every champion with a different affinity to theirs this is why you need to pay attention to the dungeon's current affinity i think uh, bringing time that does drop defense it can be really useful and um, that's really gonna help even because like if you think he's stacking up his hp uh, so his defense you want to try and bring that down so bringing down drop defense is going to you know mean that you can do more damage to him bring champions with the wrong affinities and you'll make the iron twins even stronger and they'll keep getting stronger every time they use this skill you also need to manage your champions defense stats as those with higher stats will receive longer iron brand debuffs remember the longer the duration of iron brand the more damage the iron twins will do with their super powered skill which we're getting to i promise there is one silver lining at least. Once the Iron Twins drop below 40% HP, they'll stop using the skill. Though Thank God. Need something to help us out, don't we? Getting them to that point is a different story. Okay, skill three, Ruinous Swath. Ruinous Swath mirrors fires of insanity, except this skill applies Iron Brand based on your champion's attack rather than their defense. Okay, so this one, rather than sort of burning your team, it gives them a slap. So every time your team's getting a slap, you know that it's all about attack rather than defense. The champion with the highest attack gets the longest Iron Brand this time. It's the same story with the Iron Twins stat increases. Every time they use this skill, they'll get stronger. But this time, it's their attack that gets boosted rather than their defense. The Twins will also stop using the skill when their HP Okay, so obviously that's just going to mean that they're going to hit a lot harder and be doing more damage to us. Drops below 40%. Okay, so you have all these Iron Brand debuffs. Let's finally discuss this super powered skill which puts them to use. Enter Doomsday Machine, the Iron Twins' fourth skill. To start, the Iron Twins attack your entire team with two AOE hits. The first hit applies or extends any Iron Brand debuffs based on each champion. Okay, so there's a good thing there. I don't know if you noticed, but um, when Arbiter dropped, um, all those Iron Brand buffs on her dropped off. Um, and I think champions that will be really good for this are Revivers and um, revivers that can like AOE revive. So, you know, obviously bring up more than one or two people um, and potentially you'd want someone that can, you know, revive your whole team one go. So that's one way to sort of keep Peace going. Defense with the second doing the same, but based on attack. Think of it like the two previous skills rolled into one. Fortunately, it will increase the duration of Iron Brand by fewer turns. The champion with the highest attack or defense will get five turns of Iron Brand. The next highest will get four, the next highest three, and you get the picture. But remember, it does this twice. So if one champion has more attack and defense than the rest of your team, they'll receive another 10 turns of Iron Brand. 
The Iron Twins then fire a devastating laser at your entire team, with the damage of this energy beam increasing based on the duration of each Iron Brand debuff. If that's not scary enough, this Searing Ray ignores 30% of your champion's defense stat. And it also increases the Iron Twins' attack and defense by 4% with each use, plus an extra little bit once again for any champions whose affinity is different to theirs. Okay, so it just keeps stacking up, basically. He just, you know, it is sort of like a speed race. You're going to need to try and kill him as fast as you can because the longer he stays up, it's a bit like the Griffin. He's just going to get more and more powerful and he's just going to drop your team. And that's it. Game over, man. Game over. Holy moly. That's some serious damage. Also, just as a little reminder that Iron Brand cannot be blocked or removed. Hopefully now you understand why managing Iron Brand is vital to succeeding in this fight. So it can't be blocked or removed, but um, you can see some of these champions don't have it on them, like Mithrala. So I wonder if you've got like high resistance, um, you can block it. Otherwise, you'll be sweeping up what remains of your champions with a broom. With a There's broom. Still a weapon in the Iron Twins arsenal, and that's their passive skill, Retaliatory Launch. Every time their HP drops below a certain threshold, the Twins fire a missile barrage at your whole team, then remove. All right. So a bit like the Ice Golem. Um, yeah, just just another thing that we need this guy to have, but it's fine. It's with any debuffs from themselves. I'm sure it's the not going to be so hard. Their turn meter by 10% every time one of your champions receives a buff, unless they're under a decreased speed debuff. Similar to other bosses, they are immune to turn meter reduction effects, along with crowd control debuffs like stun and freeze. They also take less and less damage from multi-hit skills. That armor's not made of normal iron. We'll tell you that much. So, what's the best way to send this? Okay, so. Just having a quick thing, I just thought about it. So if you bring in champions that um, are attack based or defense based, HP champions are really going to shine here because obviously they don't have loads of defense and they don't have loads of attack. So bringing in like a HP Rotos or Magnar, someone that's like that, I feel like they're going to be like really strong here. So that should really help people out. Killing machine right. to the scrap heap. And this is what we want. Tips Eat to win. First, you'll need to build separate teams for each affinity. The more champions... Okay, yeah. I thought so. I thought that you'd have to have um, different affinity teams for all different affinities. So, yeah, that makes sense. With differing affinities, the stronger the Iron Twins will get from many of its skills. So aim for single affinity teams where you can. Second, resistance is your friend. While Iron Brand can't be blocked or removed, it can be resisted. Okay, yeah. That What's good about that as well is you can also uh, resist those decreased defense and attacks as well. So that's really good as well. So load your... And also the other thing they've, I don't think they've mentioned is any champions that have like resistant auras. Um, so I'm just trying to think, what's his name? Razin. Razin would be great for this. Um, Your champions up with high resistance. Yeah, so any champions with resistance power is going to help a lot. Machine. Third, while healing is important to survive the twins onslaught, be mindful of buffs. Unless you've placed the decreased speed debuff on the twins, they'll increase their turn meter every time your champion receives a buff. Okay, so decreased uh, speed is going to be really important here. Uh, there's a lot of champions that do do it, and it is a great debuff. So, yeah, definitely worth bringing in. Especially you're going to be uh, buffing up your team as well. Meaning, they're closer to taking you out. Fourth, and most importantly, focus on hitting hard and hitting fast. With the Twins attack and defense constantly ticking up, they will overpower you if you let them kick into... Okay, so Cold Art's a good option, especially if you're like free to play, sort of mid, mid to end game. Um, one thing I think as well that I'm a little bit disappointed by is I wish that Hex or um, Bombs would have like a place here. Or I think HP Burn and Poison would probably be quite good here. But, um, you know, Hex is like their, it's their new debuff and it just doesn't really have like a solid, solid place in the game, especially compared to other buffs, uh, debuffs, sorry. And I just feel that bombs as well, like bombs, are, I, I do like bombs actually. I do use them in arena. I do use them on bombel, obviously. But they just don't have like a massive place in the game. They're really like underused by them. And this is a great place where they could have like introduced that. But unfortunately they haven't. No overdrive. Don't bother with multi-hit skills either. Single hit nukes are your best countermeasure for toppling this devastating duo. We can't wait to see what ironclad strategies you all employ to take on this new dungeon. We hope this video was useful. Make sure to hit like, check out our previous Awakening preview, and subscribe for more existing raid content. See you next time. Happy raiding. Cool. So it does look interesting, and uh, I'm looking forward to doing some uh, content on this. So, um, you know, I will do uh, some different teams for you guys out there.
when when it does get released you know and do one for each affinity so that's four videos i've got to make in the future so yeah that should that should be pretty cool so anyway thank you so much for watching guys um i hope you had a good one uh please leave me a cheeky thumbs up if you uh enjoyed today's video otherwise give me a smash 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 uh, for a subscribe and i'll see you in my next video peace